These are creepy TikToks that will make you rethink your whole reality. Now, if you ever find yourself in space and end up falling into a neutron star, there are a couple ways you could die. Back in World War II, soldiers relied heavily on milk to survive, leading to a huge demand in milk. However, once the war ended, why would you ever put your children in something like this? Another photo of Ellen sitting in her house with a painting in the background with suspicious symbols on them that are eerily similar to symbols you use in satanic worshiping rituals. <laughs> I'm back, it's your boy FITT, I to the E, and today we're taking a look at this compilation together. If you guys like the chain, check the link down in the description. If you also check the link down in the description, there's a Google form for you guys to put your scary, crazy, and strange stories. I will be reacting to them in a later video. So if you want to be in my video, this is me interacting with you. So put your stories also down in the description. And you can also buy the chain, so. Horrifying things caught while camping. Some teens are around a campfire, presumably in the woods, watching cartoons and goofing around. Eventually, one of the girls leaves, and they realize she's been gone for quite a while. Yeah, I know, for legit though, like, Alexis has been gone for so freaking long trying to actually boot. The video clips a bit, and it shows one of the guys standing around, clearly worried. Um, can a couple of people just come with me just to make sure we're good? Yeah. A few of the guys go out, looking for the missing girl. Slowly, they become more and more concerned about her well-being, and their voices get frenzied. Eventually, we hear a scream in the distance, and they start rushing after it. Alexis? Alexis. Shit. In the woods, a stick structure is built up, and they slowly approach it, only to quickly, terrified, go running. <laughs> Man, this is why I do not go camping, bro. Like, honestly, I probably would if I had protection, you know what I'm saying? Or even national parks. Man, the stories I've heard, crazy stuff. Have you heard the terrifying mystery of room 2805? On an ordinary day in May, an unidentified woman called the Plaza Hotel in Oslo to make arrangements for herself to stay. And a few days later, that woman arrived at the hotel and checked into room 2805. She registered under the name Jennifer Fairgate from Belgium. She got the keys to her room, headed up, and placed a do not disturb sign on the door. And from there, it's a mystery. The woman seemed to keep to herself. Three days into her stay, the front desk realized that they didn't have a card on file for the room. So on Saturday, June 3rd at 7.50 p.m., a security guard went up to the room, knocked. A few seconds later, he heard a shot. So he runs back down to the security desk for help, leaving a gap of 15 minutes where it's unknown if anyone left the room. Security team got to the room, knocked, to find it double locked from the inside. They eventually get into the room to find that woman alone and gone. But once they started inspecting the room, the scene didn't quite add up. It appeared that woman had just gotten out of the shower. She was nicely dressed, wearing high heels. She looked like she was about to go out for the night. And when they looked through her belongings, they couldn't find an ID for the woman. She had no wallet, no keys, no cosmetics, no toothbrush, no hairbrush. And even stranger, when they looked at the woman's clothes, every single label on her clothing was removed. And even stranger, one of those bags that she brought was filled to the brim with ammunition. So, did this woman really have no ID, no belongings, no toothbrush? Or did someone remove it from the room in those 15 minutes? I'm thinking the latter. The entire scene suggested foul play, but police saw no evidence of a struggle or any sign that anyone else was even in the room besides her. All authorities had to go on was the name and address that she gave at check-in. From there, police notify Belgian authorities of this woman's case so that her family can be informed. Their response back was, who? Jennifer Fairgate? Doesn't exist. And what about the man that was with her at check-in? Go to part two. One of the most baffling unsolved cases ever, this is the mystery of room 2805. Police find that the woman found in that hotel room, Jennifer Fairgate, doesn't exist. They got no hits on her fingerprints found in the room either. So investigators travel back to the Belgian address that she gave at check-in. They felt that this had to be a lead as the address and phone number given led to a specific town. But when they got there and asked around, they found that nobody in the town had ever even seen this woman. So what was the connection there? And it gets even stranger. Newspapers publicize this case repeatedly. Sketch photos of the mystery woman have circulated for decades in several countries but no one has ever identified her. And this all transpired in 1995. No leads. 
Everywhere they turned was a dead end, but there was one question that a front desk associate had that could break the entire case wide open. According to her, she said the mystery woman wasn't alone at check-in that evening. She was with a man, one Louis Fairgate. She even named him on their registration paperwork. The plot thickens, so who is Louis Fairgate? But the bizarre thing is, no one ever saw this man again and there was no trace of him in the hotel room. Only room service was ordered for one person, only her prints found at the scene. And police looked into Louis Fairgate to find that he doesn't exist either. So who was this man and where did he go? And he has never been identified either in decades. Did Louis Fairgate slip out the door that day with all her belongings? And what happened in that hotel room? Investigators say that whoever this woman was did a really great job at concealing her identity and say that this investigation has been like trying to track a ghost. I say that someone made her untraceable. And the question remains, who were these people? Were they on the run or undercover? This case is mind bending. What are your thoughts? Yeah, it definitely was a case of people just using fake identities. Um, the reasoning though, I'm not sure. I wonder if they're just trying to do some crazy stuff like that and just didn't work, it just went south. Yo, she... I want you to take a look at this picture snapped from a group of friends back in 2012. Let me explain the haunting backstory behind this picture. It's not for the faint of heart. These friends are thrill seekers, right? So their thing is that they go to explore abandoned buildings all throughout their state in Illinois. But there was one town in particular that really piqued their interest because allegedly it had a madman who was still on the loose. One who police believed was responsible for several bodies that were found in this area, all with their heads missing, assuming that he took them with him. So they come to this town because they're planning to spend the night in this abandoned hospital in this picture so they can record content. But as the night goes on and things get darker, they suddenly get this eerie feeling like they're not alone in this hospital. But while they're exploring in the dark, they start snapping pictures on their phone to try to illuminate the rooms that they're in, and they finally start to explore the showers, which was where they snapped this photo, which was more than enough to scare them into leaving. They didn't know what that was, so they call police who search the hospital and realize that that's not a mask. It sure as well look like a mask, yo. <laughs> Yo, that is some Ed Gein. You guys know who Ed Gein is? You know who Ed Gein is? Yo, Ed Gein, that's a weird dude. He he was doing stuff like that. Like, ugh, I can't even explain it, bro. Can't even explain it. If you don't know who Ed Gein is, just look it up. Bridgeworm. Bridgeworm is a creature created by horror artist Trevor Henderson. And although Bridgeworm is a made-up creature, his backstory is creepy. When Trevor Henderson released his first picture of Bridgeworm, he stated that in 2018, a photographer by the name of Thomas had recently gone missing. A while after he'd gone missing, his camera was found, and the last photo on his camera roll was this photo right here. Bridgeworm peeking through a tunnel. The story goes that the photographer Thomas came upon Bridgeworm, snapped a photo of him, and then was eaten by him. Bridgeworm tricks his victims by looking like a cute worm at first, and then his face peels back to reveal this, his true form. It's said that his favorite snack is humans, so I don't advise any of you to go near bridges at night. You know, yeah, I've been under a couple bridges at night and I've never seen Bridgeworm. Yeah, I wonder what he, if he ever pulled up on me though, I feel like I would really just handle that. I'm gonna show you a picture and tell me how it makes you feel. There's an extremely dark backstory behind this photo. One that you probably wouldn't suspect. This was way out in Jefferson County, Georgia. This is back in 2017 and there was a lot of suspicious activity coming out of this area. This was right around April of that year, kind of near Easter time. So of course families had a lot of plans to have their family in town despite there being a lot of break-ins in this area. So very late one evening, the girl where this story came from was home with her family, her two older brothers, when it appears that she must have heard something outside of her room because she got out of bed. Because there was a smashed dish that was found at the scene, we can assume that was what she heard. So she left her room and immediately started filming, thinking that it was probably her older brother. So she was trying to make a joke. Only when she left her room, it was not her brother in the kitchen. No one seemed to hear anything, but she was found the following morning in the backyard of the home. And this was one of the final frames that was captured on her phone that was released publicly. Yo, tell me what I look like Freddy Frazbear from Five Nights at Freddy's. <laughs> what? Yo, why did animatronics just enter her crib like that? A bit scary. This is the disturbing truth behind Got Milk. Okay, so everybody remembers the insanely large campaign Got Milk, with the message being that milk is the most nutritious thing anybody could consume. It had major celebrities backing the campaign, but what if it was all a lie? 
Back in World War II, soldiers relied heavily on milk to survive, leading to a huge demand in milk. However, once the war ended, there was no demand for milk at all. But the rich and powerful already invested a lot of money building up the milk industry. And they were not going to let it die. And it is said to keep the milk industry alive, the rich and powerful paid off the government to advertise milk everywhere and make it seem like milk is the healthiest thing ever. So are the benefits of milk really true? Is milk really nutritious or are they scamming us? From what I've heard, I've heard that it actually does have a lot of health benefits, mostly for people that were like that have malnutrition, that didn't have as much nutrition or things to eat. Whenever they had cows and milk, it allowed, I guess, more growth or some Things caught in the forest. In this 2021 video, a group of friends is rowing a small boat at night when they discover they're not alone on the river. In fact, while floating in still waters, one of the guys reaches his hand into the river but quickly snatches it back as he feels something grabbing him. <laughs> Scared, the crew directs the camera toward the water a few feet away, looking for the assailant but as the guys keep observing the water, something terrifying emerges from the darkness. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, them kids was tripping, bro. Why is your- Yo, you can't even see beneath the- It's so- It's so mucky and just like yucky, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Why would you put your hand in the mud water? You can't even see what's underneath the surface hell no bro if i if, if i'm being real if the water i'm in is green like a lake or just muddy and just icky i'm not going in that not going in that man smiling in this photo was arrested after hunting down and brutalizing earning him the nickname the alaskan avenger as a kid jason vukovic was and physically by his stepfather Larry until he ran away from home at the age of 16. Larry was charged with the abuse but never served any jail time and as the years passed, Jason grew haunted by his stepfather. He reached a breaking point in 2016 when he decided to use his state sex offender registry to track down criminals, break into their homes, and beat them with a hammer. In 2018, Jason was sentenced to 28 years in prison and has since come out apologizing for his actions. He says that vigilantes have no place in society and warns that just because your past was taken from you, you shouldn't ruin the future that you have ahead. Now, with someone like that, you can kind of tell that they've been through a lot. Like, he literally said that in his past, he's also been through some stuff. But I wonder how long he got sentenced for, though. Why is found footage always this creepy? If you don't know the story of Shannon Barlow and the footage that she caught, she was a pretty well-known documentary filmmaker in the early 2000s right outside of North Carolina. She very famously went into the abandoned hospital in city center where she would film her last video. She never returned from that hospital, so police went searching and they found her camera and focused on the footage where they selected this frame. I looked at it and I'm like, why this frame? What is important about it? And if you look to the background, on the right, you'll see it. In the right doorway of this hallway, there is a man who is watching her as she filmed this. Despite an investigation, her remains were never found, but there was evidence of a struggle, so it suggested that she didn't survive this. The enhanced video footage is the only visual that we have of who is believed to be her assailant. Can you do how to summon Eyeless Jack? Disclaimer, Eyeless Jack is just a fictional creepypasta character. He cannot actually hurt you. So I've done the story of Eyeless Jack, how he takes people's kidneys in the middle of the night. The story goes that you'll see him looming over your bed like this, and then he'll take your kidney. Well, it is said that there is a way to summon Eyeless Jack. In order to do this, you have to lay down in your bed and hold your stomach where your kidneys are. Then you have to close your eyes and whisper, Eyeless Jack, take my kidney. After you say this, then you open your eyes and look out your bedroom window. When you look out your window, you should see Eyeless Jack entering your house. It's said that after he takes your kidney, your wound will disappear. It'll heal completely. There will be no sign that anyone ever took your kidney. Once again, disclaimer, this is just a creepypasta story. There's nothing to be scared of. Yo, ain't no way that's a real thing. Yo, I could just imagine there's someone out there that actually did that. Yo. Why would you want to do that though? That, that, that just, just doesn't even make sense. He's like, Eyeless Jack, take my kidney. What? I don't want my kidneys to bro. Get out of here. Disturbing things caught on dashcam footage. This man was returning home with his car when suddenly. What the fuck? Whoa, 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 get back. What the what the f oh, just fuck? Get the what the f This car was certainly not expecting this. Again, another unexpected event on the road. 
Спасибо. This man was peacefully driving when suddenly. Yo, the fact that it jumped again after jumping already into the car. Nah, that was hilarious. It was like some video game glitch. Like you just keep spamming jump. Like jump, jump. But nah, some of those some of those clips were strange though. I'm not gonna lie. And the lightning hitting that woman's car or a guy's car twice. Scary stuff. How do three men disappear at the exact same time? This is the mysterious disappearance of the three lighthouse keepers. In the late 1890s, the Flannan Isles, a group of rocky islands off the west coast of Scotland, commissioned a lighthouse to be built on Aelin Moor. Four lighthouse keepers were assigned to it and would work staggered shifts. But there were always three keepers there at any given time working weeks on and weeks off. In December 1900, three of those lighthouse keepers arrived for their usual shift. James Ducat, the primary keeper with 20 years experience, along with Donald MacArthur and Thomas Marshall. These three Scottish lads were tough and very experienced. Everything was thought to be fine until December 26th, a ship visited the lighthouse in a routine visit. When they arrived, they were shocked to find the light was off and the lighthouse was completely empty. And the three keepers had disappeared. Strangely, nothing on the island or in the lighthouse looked amiss, no signs of a struggle or indication of any accidents. They did find that the fireplace hadn't been lit in several days, and bizarrely, all the clocks inside the lighthouse had been stopped. The area was searched up and down, but no sign of any of the men. It was like they vanished into thin air. Found in the lighthouse were the logs documenting the keeper's final days, which were pretty normal. One strange detail noted in the logs were in reference to the horrible storms and winds they had been having. This was odd as locals reported no bad storms recently. But by far the strangest part of those logs were that the keepers seemed a bit off in their final days. Morale was low amongst the men. Marshall wrote that Ducat had been very quiet and Donald MacArthur had been crying. These men were veterans and thus it would be very strange for them to be crying in response to storms. The final log entry was made on December 15th stating, quote, storm ended, see calm, God is over all. Another strange finding, one of the keeper's jackets was found inside the lighthouse, which meant he went missing in the midst of a harsh winter with no coat. Many were stumped by their disappearances, but some not so much. According to Scottish legend, these islands were thought to be haunted, so much so that travelers would make a point to never ever spend the night there. So what happened to them? One theory suggests that maybe the men were swept to sea in an accident. Another theory is that one or more of the keepers could have suffered a psychological break from reality. In the logs, it was evident that something was off with the men. Were they hallucinating these storms? The bouts of crying and isolation, did something go down between the men? This unsolved mystery has haunted people for years. What do you think happened? Or had a daughter who he loved more than anything in the world. She fell in love with a farmhand named Jim. But the farmer didn't think that Jim was good enough for his daughter, so in an attempt to keep them apart, he sent his daughter to live with her uncle on the other side of the county. Soon after she left, Jim got very sick, and unfortunately, he wasted away and died. Everyone said that he must have died from a broken heart. The farmer felt so guilty about Jim's death that he couldn't bear to tell his daughter what happened. So she continued to hope that someday her and Jim might have the chance to be together. One night, many weeks later, there was a knock on her uncle's door. When the girl answered it, Jim was standing there. He told her, your father asked me to come get you, and I came on his best horse. Not knowing what was wrong, she jumped on the back of his horse and they rode away together. Soon into their ride, Jim began complaining of a headache. The girl put her hand on his forehead and said, Jim, you're cold as clay. I hope you're not getting sick. She then wrapped her handkerchief around his head. Within a few hours, they had reached the farm. The girl quickly jumped off the horse and knocked on her father's door. But her father was surprised to see her. Didn't you send for me, she asked. And he said, no, I didn't. The girl turned to Jim, but he was gone, and so was the horse. And when they went to the stable to look for them, they found the horse there covered with sweat and trembling with fear, but Jim was nowhere to be found. Terrified, her father told her the truth about Jim's death. They quickly went to see Jim's parents and decided to open his grave. There, his corpse lay in his coffin, but around his head, they found the girl's handkerchief. Now, opening someone's grave is crazy. That'd be so scary. Imagine you're someone you knew and you're just looking at like, 
I don't know. I couldn't, I couldn't do it. All right, so Reddit user Circlestone says, my aunt is a nurse and told me some stories, but this one stuck with me. There was an old lady who insisted on being strapped down at night in her bed. She told my aunt that there was a dark figure that was trying to grab her and take her out of her room where she would die. My aunt and other nurses oblige, and for the next few nights she would check on her and it would look as though someone was trying to pull her from the bed randomly while she slept. My aunt is then off and whoever is this lady's nurse doesn't strap her down at night. Nurses found the old lady dead, laying on the floor by the door, her hand stretched out past the door and into the hallway. What's up? These are the most horrifying ways to die. Part 1. Number 1. Death by a neutron star. Now you may be wondering, what is a neutron star in the first place? Well, it's basically a star formed after a gravitational collapse of the remnant of a massive star formed after a supernova explosion. And it's got a mass bigger than the sun, and it's about the size of a city. Now, if you ever find yourself in space and end up falling into a neutron star, there are a couple ways you could die. So let me just go ahead and get right into it. Now, most likely you're probably going to die from radiation, but if the star is smaller or quieter than usual, you may have some free fall time. All right, so the first way is that if your head was facing the neutron star, you're going to get pulled stronger than if your feet were facing that way. And you're basically going to get pulled swiftly into the star and basically ripped in half. All right, the last one, you're just gonna be stretched until you're in a big puddle of human plasma and you could possibly generate a very lethal gamma radiation that could kill us all you star, yo. <laughs> yeah i don't think any of us are gonna get death by neutron star anytime soon or anytime ever if i'm being real but like if i was or if you was oh my gosh that would be so tragic it'd be kind of scary i feel like if you didn't have a space suit first of all you'd be dead by just touching space in general but like getting spaghettified i don't know dude have you heard the craziest conspiracy theory about Ellen DeGeneres that is so dark, especially after what they found in her house? As you know, Ellen has been described as an evil and devilish person to work with at The Ellen Show. Staff would describe their experience working with her as being ran by intimidation, fear, bullying, allegations that employees were being essayed and touched by higher level executives and Ellen knew about it. While hosting her show, Ellen was also tied to the Illuminati after repeatedly flashing the symbol. It's also interesting that her set matches the building on Epstein Island with white and blue stripes, gold touches, and palm trees. She's been frequently closely tied to the lizard person conspiracy theory. Even her home staff described her as evil and would say that her true personality comes out at home and it's worse than anything you've heard she's done at work. Look closely at this video of Ellen at home because it could expose evil and devilish parts of her private life. If you saw in the background of that video, through the glare of the window, you can see this painting that says evil thoughts and it's a devil's face. The artist who made that painting, who's been dead for a long time, painted a lot of Satan worshiping pieces. Not to mention this symbolism directly on her sweatshirt while she's broadcasting. Then look at another photo of Ellen sitting in her house with a painting in the background with suspicious symbols on them that are eerily similar to symbols you use in satanic worshiping rituals. The scariest one of all these is of Ellen giving her mother a haircut and look closely at the painting behind her. I believe it says RIP on the bottom above her mother's head. Before I tell you the craziest part about all this, make sure you follow so you finally know all the craziest conspiracy theories about each of these celebrities and requests who you want to see next. All of these different pieces and paintings found are from different artists, so why does Ellen always go out of her way to find this type of dark symbolism to express? Well, you know, what I will say is that's quite interesting. I don't know why she just didn't pay me to draw those paintings, you know what I'm saying? I feel like I could have did a wonderful job at drawing those paintings. I, that's just me. I don't know. Like, what y'all think? You think I could have? I think I could have did a wonderful job. She could have paid me that hundred thousand dollars to paint those. Like, come on. Now. I feel like a lot of artists have like a devilish symbol nowadays. I feel like that's just the normal. Like, just to be like a devil worshiper. I don't know, bro. Me personally, nah. But like, if that's if that's the wave nowadays, I mean. <laughs> Let me show y'all how much y'all don't pay to join in the club. Yeah, nah. That's Celine Dion one. What the hell, yo? The one where the kid had the hoe. Like, what? <laughs> what? Yo, that, that's a very interesting clothing line. I'll say, though, it's definitely better than Ellen's drawing in her walls, bro. I'm telling you, she could have paid me to draw those, bro. I'd have been professional. Professional. Like, damn, man. Thinking about that now. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. If you guys liked the video, like the video. Check the chains down in the description. Remember that the Google form where you can put your strange, creepy, and scary stories down are down in the description. Keep them PG. Keep them short and to the point. 
you know what I'm saying? When you type your stories, hopefully, you know, it's something that actually happened. No makeup garbage, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, make, like, real stories. Real stories. And I'll read it. I'll be reacting to them probably sometime next week, or if not next week, towards the end of January. But, like, you know what I'm saying? Just put, put your stories down below, bro. I'll definitely read through the best ones, and the best ones will be in the video, so... Check that Google form down in the description along with the chain, you know what I'm saying? Also, I'm making a Discord community, so that's coming soon. You guys could also send your videos over there. Um, so look out for the Discord in the link in the description too. It's not there yet, but it will be there soon. But anyways, thank you for watching. Remember to like and subscribe. Let's try to get to 500 likes this video. Love you, boys.